Well, share, mademoiselle. It is with deepest pride and greatest pleasure that we welcome you tonight. We invite you to relax, just pull up a chair, as this channel proudly presents your options. That's right, I'm inviting you to be our guest in the world of six scale collecting. But we'll talk about that in just a few moments. As you can see, we got a little bit of a different setup, so make sure to let me know down in the comments if you like this, if you prefer something else. I'm trying some new things here because, as you know, we are on a quest to 2,021 subscribers, and as of right now, we are almost at 1,200. I need five more, as of the YouTube analytics today, to get us to 1,200. So that very well could be you. If you've not done so already, I know it's annoying, but please go ahead, like, subscribe to this channel, turn on your notifications so that you know whenever we drop a new video. And that being said, I am making a commitment to all of our lovely people out there that we will be giving you a new video every Monday from here on out till the end of the year because consistency is key right? So I want to make sure to try to be as consistent as we can to be able to put out some good, solid content from here to the end of December and who knows how long. Because as I said, we're on our way to 2,021 subscribers. So let's get in to the meat of everything that we're going to be talking today about should you become a sixth scale collector? Now, before I share with you four critical things to think about when becoming a sixth scale collector, I want to start off with a little bit of story time. Now, the thing that got me back into collecting after I'd kind of gotten out of it as a kid is that I got into Funko Pops. And as you know, Funko is, I consider to be the gateway drug of collecting. They are easy to obtain, there's lots of them, they're cheap, they're cute, they're stackable, they display very, very well. And before you know it, as most people, including myself, and I'm guaranteeing you a dozens and dozens of you out there watching this right now, you started with one Funko Pop, and before you knew it, you had an entire wall full. But I came to a realization that I may not want to have a wall full of $10 pieces of plastic. And I said, what is going to be next for me? From there, I said, you know what? I want to go back to my roots. I want to go back to my collecting days and start getting Star Wars figures. As I told you before, I found a blue chest in my uncle's basement that had my very first Star Wars figures in it. I had a Snowtrooper, a Gamorrean Guard, as well as some G.I. Joes, and that is what started me on my collecting journey. Through growing up and through different life changes, I ended up putting those all away, regrettably so. But then, after some Funko Pops, it brought me back to say I want to become a Star Wars and toy collector again. So with that being said, I went and jumped into the Black Series, and I can uh, accumulated a dozens and dozens of Black Series. And from there, I said, I don't want it just to be Star Wars. I also want it to be Marvel. And so I went and got Marvel Legends. So I had entire bookcases full of nothing but six inch figures. But as I started to kind of look at those and I went toy hunting and I went to different comic shops, I then ran into the world of six scale collecting. I've told you all before, when I was at Rick's Comic City, I ran into my first ever six scale collectible, my first hot toy, that being Deadpool from Deadpool 2. Now, when I took that out of its box, I kind of played with it for a minute and I said, there is something different about this. And so I put it down, I said, I'm not getting into this right now. And I went back to my world of six inch collecting. It was not until I said, okay, I'm gonna just get this. Deadpool's my favorite comic book character. I end up getting one hot toy, a Deadpool hot toy. And before you knew it, I said, well, if I have a Marvel hot toy, can I not also have a Star Wars one? And it was at that moment I jumped to eBay and I said, where can I find Dark Side Anakin Skywalker? Darth Vader, Anakin Skywalker as he falls to the dark side is my favorite moment in Star Wars as well as my favorite character. And I said to myself, is this what I want to do? And I went and I was able to find for well under retail, because keep in mind, before Dark Side Anakin Skywalker shot to almost $900 on the secondary market, he was sitting on the Sideshow website begging for people to buy them. And as you know, the law of supply and demand, as well as FOMO, 
people kicked in and started kicking themselves and they said, I need this figure. But all that to say, I had Deadpool, I had Anakin, and then I said, well, maybe I should at least get one more Marvel figure and it snowballed out of control. And 150 plus different six scale figures later, here we are today. Now your story may be very similar to mine, it may be completely different from mine, but at the end of the day, I'm hoping that I can share with you these four important things to consider that I wish I would have considered a long time ago when I dove into six scale collecting. Now, the first one you have to obviously look at is the cost. Now, when you're a six scale collector, sometimes the cost can be extremely prohibitive to a lot of different people. You look at some of these things and you say, goodness, $200 plus for one figure? That just seems absolutely asinine. There is no way on earth I'm going to pay $200 for one figure. But I had to ask myself, is it really a cost thing? Can I really not put that money towards a figure of much better quality and design? You say, oh, I can't do that. I'm just going to stick with Marvel Legends. I'm just going to stick with Black Series. But let me ask you, if you're like me and you try to complete all the Build-A-Figures, you end up spending about $200 per wave for your Marvel Legends. And with that, whenever you get your Marvel Legends within those waves, there's no doubt figures in there that you really don't want. You just got to complete the Build-A-Figure. So if you're weighing the options of, is it cost prohibitive? I would argue that the cost is not the issue. It depends on whether you want a lot of figures or one solid figure. And then only you can answer that question. And I'm certainly not saying that six scale is any better than six inches because we wouldn't be here in the six scale world without the original, you know, three and three quarter Star Wars figures from way back in the day. But I want us to analyze and I want us to think about, is cost something that is keeping you from getting out or in to the six scale world? Speaking of those six inch figures, Marvel Legends, Star Wars Black Series, NECA, any of those that are available at retail, you have to bring up number two if you're considering six scale collecting, and that is the availability of these products that you're collecting. Now, if you're like me, you have certainly driven hundreds of miles, you have spent hundreds of dollars in gasoline, only to get to the store, to be searching, toy hunting, and to go to find the pegs completely empty. It is so frustrating and so uh, maddening whenever there is a specific release that is an exclusive to a Target or a Walmart and you try to go online only to find out that you can't get it there. So you have to fight with scalpers that are at Target and such. And you end up having to pay on the secondary market if you really want this figure because you can't find it. What if I told you that there was an option for you to get the figures that you want whenever you want? That is one of the biggest things that drove me to six scale collecting is the being done with the chase of these toy hunts. Now, toy hunting's fun, don't get me wrong, but when you're trying to complete a line, there is nothing more infuriating than figuring out that you can't get the figure that you want. The thing about six scale collecting that is so appealing to me is the availability, as I said. Now, a majority of all these figures that you see that I've gotten or that you may have uh, taken a look at on different types of websites are usually available for pre-order. So you have plenty of time to not only plan your budget, but also plan what figures you want. And 99.9% .9 of the time, the figures that you want, if you pre-order them, you will get them. No more running to the store, no more beating a scalper, no more running out of gas, no more going anywhere other than your favorite website, such as Pop Collectibles, that's where I use to get mine, to be able to get your pre-orders in and get the figures that you want. Now, yes, you may be able to get the figures that you want, but do keep in mind, patience will be key. Don't worry because there's a long time that you have to wait. Sometimes you just need to pre-order it, set it, forget it, and then who knows when it finally comes around, you'll be like, wow, I forgot that figure was even in my queue. I can't wait to get this bad boy. But being able to know that if there's a figure you really want, you can get is a huge selling point in the six scale world. So we've talked about the cost, we've talked about the availability. Now number three, we're going to talk about the quality of these figures. I don't think there's any secret to the fact that Hot Toys and Six Scale Collecting is the zenith, that is the pinnacle of your collecting world. 
Now, while there may be some that actually prefer statues to some of these six scale, I'm talking about actual figures, things that you can pose. So when I have a six inch figure in my hand, if it be Marvel Legends, or even if it's Mezco, I know there's some really cool things out there from Mez Mezco, SH Figure Arts, different, different lines like that, but you cannot hold a hot toy in your hand as well as a Star Wars Black Series in your hand and say that they are equals. Now you say, well, that's why this one's $200 plus and this one is 20. But as I said, do you really want to have 10 figures that you paid 20, $25 for that you really don't care about and that you spent hours in dollars trying to track down at the store? Or do you want to get a figure such as, you know, Anakin or somebody that means something to you to say, wow, I have a figure that I was able to get, that I was able to pre-order, that I didn't have to chase down, but this is the absolute best version of this figure that is available. When you look at the head sculpts, when you look at the tailoring, when you look at the posability, the flexibility, the photography options even that come in the world of six scale collecting, you cannot say that there's anything that is superior to it. I know I've done a video before about the best head sculpts that Hot Toys has ever done. As I said, they're just something different about being able to have a little miniature version of your favorite actor, of your favorite character, of your favorite movie moment. Being able to add those to your collection is such a cool thing, especially when people come to the house and they say, hey, can I see your toy room? And you have to tell them, no, it's not that type of toy room, that's downstairs. But the toy room I wanna show you is full of this stuff. And I promise you, every single time that I've had people come over, they're always like, whoa, I had no idea that these were even available. So you can share about your favorite stories, you can share about your favorite figures, and who knows, you may even get another fan to get on board. And lastly, as we wrap up the things to consider when jumping into the world of six scale collecting, the fourth thing, now that we've talked about cost, we've talked about availability, we've talked about the quality, let's actually talk about that dreaded world, the market. Now, let me interject with a special PSA. If you're wanting to get into the world of six scale collecting simply for investment purposes, please put that money elsewhere. Collecting toys is not an investment. It should be a hobby. It should be something that is fun. If you're looking to make money off of a collection or flip figures, you're in the wrong thing to do. This should be something that you enjoy, something that you want to do. But with that being said, when you look at market value, as I said, I have an Anakin Skywalker who's going for around $900. Now I bought him for $200 about from eBay years ago. Now he's obviously accumulated in desire and in value. And so you're like, wow, you just made 700 bucks on that figure. That's not the way to look at it because the markets can be fickle. You should never buy with the idea of hoping to make a buck. I cannot stress that enough. But on the other side of that, Yes, these figures do hold their value much more than your six inch collections. From my experience, I know there's websites and all kinds of different data and things out there where people actually track this. From my experience, all of the six scale figures from especially Hot Toys usually stay right at retail value or they do appreciate in value. There are very few select figures that actually depreciate in value depending on whether or not it was a well-received film or whether or not there was much desirability for that figure. And then there's also those other figures on the spectrum that go for crazy money, but you should never bank on that and you should never bank on that, okay? don't. Don't always look at the extremes. Let's stay for the middle. So let's say, for example, that you wanted to go and to get into six scale collecting and you say, okay, I'm going to put $200 into this Thor figure and it looks awesome in my collection. I'm enjoying this, this is cool. And then something happens. Maybe you have to make an auto repair. Maybe you need to go and go out there and you need actual liquid money. So what do you do? You put it on eBay and most likely you will get your money back and then some so that you can go and make the changes and the uh, different things that you need to do in your life to make sure that you can live. Now, someone who's gotten out of six inch collecting into six scale collecting, I know exactly how hard it is to try to move and to make money from these six inch figures. When I went and originally sold all my pieces on eBay, I had to part them out, I had to, I had to put them in different lots. I ended up losing money on doing that. And I understand this isn't what you're trying to do to make money, but if you need to move your figures, it is a lot easier to move a six scale figure than a six inch one. So that's where we're at. 
I've invited you to be our guest on whether or not you want to become a six scale collector. I think you should at least consider those four things, such as the cost, the availability, the quality, and the market. Maybe it's something you are right on the fence of, and maybe this will put you over one way or the other. Make sure to let me know down below if you're considering getting into six scale collecting. Let me know if you're gonna get rid of any six inch figures, and then how are you gonna go about doing so? What is something that you may have pre-ordered that you're really excited about? Because as I said, there's nothing better than pre-ordering it and knowing that you can get it. Let me know down in the comments below. That's going to do it for us here today. As I said, if you've not done so already, please make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Turn on those notifications because as I said, every Monday from here on out till the end of the year, you will be getting brand new content. So I will be seeing you in our much needed next video.